What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Not Entertained Podcast, your home for entertainment, media, and culture. I'm your host, Gents, and on today's episode, I want to discuss the PlayStation 5, but more specifically, which games that I expect to be available on the platform. Back with me for today's episode is Cafe. What's going on? Oh, nothing much, man. I'm ready to get into this. All right, before we dive in, I think we should do a little recap on the PS4. Um, in the last half of PS4's lifespan, I've noticed some trends and platform defining decisions that, in my opinion, have set them apart from their competitors. The first of which being their commitment to expanding their PlayStation only or exclusive titles library. We saw games like Neo, Persona 5, Uncharted, Yakuza, Neo Kuni 2, and Until Dawn. We also saw a handful of remakes and remasters with Spyro Reignited, Crash Bandicoot, even Crash Team Racing later in June of 2019, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, Road Rage, Wipeout, Resident Evil 2, and uh, just a few weeks ago, Onimusha. Additionally, they've shown us that they're not going to shy away from the single player only experience or IPs without a multiplayer component, games like uh, Detroit Becoming Human. God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Spider-Man. I think it's rumored that the PS5 will officially be announced or teased this year at E3 and later released in 2020. Personally, I don't think it's going to come out until 2021, but that's for another day. Uh, That being said, there's a lot that we can cover in these next coming months leading up to the release, like potential features and general pricing. But again, for this episode, I just wanted to focus focus on the games and what we expect to see when the console finally launches. So uh, I'll let you kick off what your expectations are. All right. Uh, being that this this console will have most likely have better specs than the previous, I'm, I'm expecting a lot more than the previous console, a, a PS4, because anyone who purchases this, this console, they, they need to be able to feel that they'll be able to grow into the console, meaning... Two years aren't going to go by, and then it becomes obsolete as far as graphics are concerned. So it would have to be—they would have to be pretty hefty on the uh, on, on whatever GPU they use, and as well as the processor. Having said that, there are the games that that I would expect to to see, and that would uh, take advantage of those uh, uh, those specs. Street Fighter Six. <laughs> I take I take it. A, that's a deep one. That's one off the deep end there. I was just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna get out my r- ridiculous request out of the way. Okay. Street Fighter Six. I want to see a Metal Gear Solid re remaster. <laughs> re remaster. Okay. <laughs> that. And, you talking uh, about the the first game, or the second one, or Snake Eater? I think Snake Eater would be the best way to go, but that's just me. Well, well, pretty much the the collection. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I would they like could to probably see do a trilogy re remaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, you know, Kazima's not with them anymore, so there's not going to be any new ones coming. So, can't ask for that. But I would like to see re-re-remastered copies of, of the uh, Metal Gear Solid series on the PlayStation 5. Now, the usual suspects, of course, would be Call of Duty. You're going you're gonna to see that. But it's going to be, will these games be able to push the graphics that the system will use? That's another, you now we can use that for another day, but that's, you know, one of the biggest things when, you know, Call of Duty uses the same engine they've been using forever. So I don't know right. that they would be able to it look any different because of how they uh, how they create the game. But well, it's, uh, it's, it's Horizon interesting. Zero. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that point up because I feel like for at least the last, let's say, seven months. So going back to 2018, uh, mm-hmm. now into 2019, You've seen a lot of the games that have done well, a lot of the popular and best-selling games for PS4, like some of the titles I mentioned earlier with God of War and Spider-Man have been pushing the graphics of the system. And it's like usually right around the time where you see the console's graphics being optimized is when there's like murmurs of a new one because they've it's like, okay, this is the peak. We can't do any better than this. So let's see if we can push this a little further or they find titles that um, they feel can be re-released later on the next iteration of the console with those HD, 4K, whatever graphics going forward. Uh, for, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, funny you should say that. Spider-Man did push the hell out of the uh, PS4. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I got to a part of, on the game where I was there was a lot going on at once in this you know in in at this part of the game, and I'm of course you know out, sw- I'm swinging outside the city, and the PS4 almost hit a brick. Oh like, really? It, it, literally, it stopped. It stopped. It stopped. I was like, I, I don't believe this thing is about to crash. <laughs> That's and wild. it and it came back. I was like, okay, whew. That's but crazy. yeah, it Spider Man pushed the hell out of it, man. It's that was it's time. <laughs> <laughs> uh for uh for my usual suspects as you as you deemed it, I had a I had Spider Man two since we we're already talking about Spider Man. Bloodborne two. For most of my list, I tried to keep it to exclusive titles or titles that were somewhat exclusive or limited i guess you could say final fantasy 7 we were supposed to get this i thought last year i thought this year i still haven't heard anything about it last thing i heard was that it got pushed back again my guess would be that final fantasy 7 could potentially be a launch title for the ps5 i think grand theft auto is going to do a vice city remake for ps5 there'll be a new tomb raider i anticipate at least two of these next racing titles, be it Need for Speed, Ridge Racer, Wipeout, Gran Turismo, or maybe even Burnout. I also had Metal Gear Solid like you did, Ratchet and Clank, maybe Jack, maybe a Sly Cooper. I could see Killzone making a return. I think the show, the MLB The Show will will come back on uh, for the sports side. Yakuza, we'll also see another Yakuza or Project Judge coming for PS5. My only fringe pick here on this list is Guitar Hero. I think we're due for another music game. I don't know if Rock Band is still as popular as it was, but the Guitar Hero games, my gut says either they'll do a bundle of Guitar Hero 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't even remember how many there were in in the series, but if they remastered Guitar Hero 1, 2, and 3, I think that they'll probably do something like that for, for PS5. Now, okay. Now that that is, yeah, that is one that's off the deep in there because that I don't I'm not sure if that if that uh franchise is dead or not. I mean, it, it, it would be irresponsible of me to say that it's dead, but I don't it I don't think I don't see it hitting you know having the success that it had when it first when it first come out. I think the only music game that's probably dead at this point is the dj hero games i think okay. the guitar hero games are still popular a lot of people not a lot of people but uh there's particular streamers on twitch and youtube that have all these computer modded versions of the game and play all these meme songs and remixes to things that they're playing with their feet they're playing with GameCube controllers are doing all kinds of funky stuff uh, just because there's nothing else or nothing on the market currently. I know there's also that Rocksmith game. I know the dancing games are popular, but I think they're getting more attention on Switch and Nintendo platforms than they have been for PlayStation and Xbox, but we'll see. Now, for games I personally wanted to see, not ones that I would put my money on to expect coming out, but games that uh, selfishly I want... I had Dynasty Warriors 10. I think Dynasty Warriors would be a good game, a good silly game to put on PlayStation 5 to test the amount of bodies you can have on screen at once. Dynasty Warriors has always been a chaotic game with, mm-hmm. you know, freezing motions and camera pans and killing 1,200 enemies in a certain area. It's always been ridiculous. There's always been a million things going on in the background and around you. I think that would be a good launch title or shortly after launch title for them to come out with. I would want to see something from Atlas Studios, whether that's a Catherine 2, whether that's a Persona 6. I want to see something like that. Hopefully we get a new Enterprise from Sucker Punch. I know we already know about Ghost of, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, but I think we're due for Infamous 3. I don't know how popular... Uh, infamous second son was in comparison to infamous one and two on playstation 3 but i think we're due for a new entry in the series and i would again like to see that come back now this one is going to be kind of weird and it might be a little fringy but i had a dream about 
seeing a trailer for this game, so that's why I had to put it on this list. Either Dead to Rights, Making a Reprisal, or Sleeping Dogs 2. I really enjoyed Sleeping Dogs. I know there's, uh, I have other people in my immediate circles that enjoyed enjoyed the game as well. I found it more fun and entertaining and, and engaging story-wise than the last couple of Grand Theft Autos, but that's just me. It has a perfect mixture, or at least the first one had a perfect mixture of Grand Theft Auto elements, but then also really fun and in-depth combo systems and storytelling and authenticity that I think was really nice. And since you brought up Street Fighter, I had to bring up Tekken Tag. I want to see Tekken Tag 3 on PS5. I want a no holds barred, bring everybody back in one game, introduce a couple <laughs> new characters, bring back all the guest characters. Let me see Gon, let me see Tiger, let me see Alex, let me see all the Rogers. I want all the Jacks, 1, 2, 3, P-Jack, Gun Jack, bring them all back. Get everybody back for one. Just one time. That's all I want. Just one time. Yeah, that'd be nice. I, I, you know what? I, I, speaking of Tekken, though, I've heard that they, uh, I've seen something where they're doing, they're actually working on the Street Fighter uh, cross Tekken again. And oh. this may be, it may be, I'm pretty sure, because of how far they say it's on the back burner, that it will be a next gen title. You think so? I, I, I'm pretty. I bank. I bank on it, man. Okay. I, I'm, I think that it would happen on on next gen. I mean, and then, we already got Akuma in there. We got Geese Howard, so we got a a little taste of what it could look like. I'm surprised Akuma made it in before Sagat did. I thought he probably would have fit a little bit better, but you know, everybody likes Akuma, whatever. Oh man! <laughs> second? Oh, dude. see, it sounds good, right? Because we didn't that get Bruce, so. <laughs> Oh, you no, know, that's my main now. What, Sagat or Bruce? Yeah. Nah, Sagat. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. I mean, we could have hey, seen, man. like, Sagat and <laughs> and Marduk. You know, I think that would have been tight. We could have seen Kazuya and Sagat. That would have been dope. So Yeah, if they're, and if they use the engine that they, you know, that they use now, oh, that would be great. I think, it. I mean, I've always wanted to, I'm, I'm, like, pissed a little bit that they went with the other cross version first. Just because I don't think this game's ever going to come out or ever happen, but I think they've probably learned enough from the mistakes they made with that game and then the popularity of Tekken and what works for their platform now and how they've kind of streamlined some things to mimic some of the mechanics in uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z to make it more approachable for casual players or people that have never played a Tekken before. I think there's a lot more opportunity now and then you know bringing in the graphical component I think there's a lot more there hasn't been a better time to have these kind of conversations or to them to circle back to it or think on it but we'll see bandai's got a lot on their plate they got a lot of anime yes, games they coming out they got a season two that they just announced for dragon ball fighter z uh i don't know i think they're doing the dragon ball rpg game as well along with all the other titles that they normally do so uh okay. fingers crossed fingers crossed oh now, definitely, they. Uh, even though it is said that Death Stranding will be on uh, on PS4, I'm sure it'll probably uh, be. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm thinking that's next gen as well. I think it'll probably, it'll probably come out towards the back end, you know, the end of the life cycle. Right. Yeah, I would. I would guess any 2019 titles that come out that sell fairly well or that are uh, graphically appealing or push the current system PS4 to its limits will be remade or have some prettied up version for PS5. I don't think there's any way that we don't see God of War remastered or a 4K edition. Whatever they're going to call it, I think we'll see that on PS5 for sure. And then whatever other games that come out this year that we know or don't know about that sell well or that are graphically appealing uh last of us 2 probably another one of those that we'll see remaster or whatever they want to call it so there's 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 potential out there i think there's a and that's you know kind of one of the things that i feel is playstation's strongest points of that they've been focused and they haven't turned away from building their exclusives library. So when you do that, you have opportunities to catch people that didn't have a PS4. And now that they're considering buying one, they get to look at the most prettiest version of a game that was already great at that time. That'd be nice. Yeah. Cause uh, I mean, 
And how much do you think, you know, on how the game looks, how much do you think that that, of course you need the, the uh, specs to be able to put this stuff out and, and push the graphics, of course, but these, these, a lot of the developers for most of the games that we speak of, they, they have a set almost as if, you know, it's a set, uh, I don't know how I want to describe this. I don't know. It's like they don't they don't push the system like it didn't, they won't push the system to its limits because they have a set pretty much like almost as if it's a standard, you know, setting that they're going to use for all for all the uh all the systems. Whatever platform it is, it's it, it's all consistent. Right. So, whether or not it's Xbox, PC, PS4, PS5, whatever, it's all going to look the same because of the developer. What do you? Who, who do you think would be more likely to really push a system to its limits? Now, the first pick I would have is definitely Rockstar. Probably. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna take their time and you know figure out what they can you know what are their limits? What what can they what can they what more can they add? Because I remember when uh when Grand Theft Auto first dropped, that was the best looking water in the game that I had seen at the time. Right at the time, yeah. I think my oh. picks, my picks would probably go to Naughty Dog, uh, City Project Red, and even Bioware. Okay. Dragon Age Inquisition was beautiful. The Witcher Three, beautiful. Last of Us, Uncharted have always been cinematic and almost movie experiences. So they're probably uh, also in addition to Rockstar people that I think would would uh push things as far as they can go i think uh i think uh bethesda should be on that list mm, i don't like bethesda right now let's not <laughs> yeah, go look, there <laughs> let, let's not, let's not give, that's another fight for another day but yeah, i is. think they should make the list uh, of all the triple a titles i mean triple a companies uh i i believe that they should be on the list oh no and, and, and this is and this is why it's, it's because of skyrim uh, yeah, but I, even I, I, Skyrim, like, I mean, I, I as I didn't see Skyrim in VR when that came out, but even playing, God, I've bought that game so many times across. I probably exactly. bought Skyrim like six times across three consoles or platforms, what, whatever you want to exactly. say. Exactly. And what other game were you going to buy like that? That means that 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 title means so much that they have. I can know I can I can look past certain things because of that title. Yeah, but but for me, like even if the graphics were bad in that game, I would still play it a lot. Like even if the whole game was so mm-hmm. shaded and looked like, yep. <laughs> uh, what was that game? Wind Wind Waker, the Zelda game, that first cel shaded, well, one of the first cel shaded games at that time, whatever it was called. Even if mm-hmm. it looked like that, I would still play it as much as I did. I probably I don't want to admit how many hours I put into that way too much but <laughs> i think the graphics for me this is if that's your example from bethesda then i think if you had said fallout i probably would have gave you that a little bit more but even fallout has buggy digital and that's another argument for another day um you know the graphics aren't always clean everywhere and it's kind of all one color and brown and gray kind of stuff but i i'll i'll let you i'll let you get that in i guess i just i mean you, i mean we all know that if they do another Skyrim, it's going to be... Well, know. they announced uh, the Skyrim 6 or Elder Scrolls 6. I don't think I'm going to, again, for another day, but I don't think I'm going to buy it. But I'm sure it'll look nice. Wow. You just... Okay. But... You're just automatically not going to... Okay. I don't... Uh, they... Mm, I don't want to... <laughs> Bethesda can throw this whole episode off. So let's just... Let's keep it moving for now. Oh, yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> I whatever game that comes from them around you know whether it be any type of Elder Scrolls I I hope and I do look forward to them pushing the graphics I I I I would like to see what specs um what specs do you think the uh the PlayStation Five will have Yeah I think we can once we once we know and once they do the official reveal because me personally again like I said I don't think it's gonna come out before twenty twenty one. I think people are just bored and assuming that they're going to make an announcement just because of PlayStation has a history of every five or six years they do a new console. But I think they want to take their time. I still think the PS4 has a lot of gas in the tank. I still think they want to 
produce as many titles for this platform as they can before they officially move over to the next but let's get into some of the long shots never gonna happen why are you bringing this up it probably will never will you're triggering uh, me by mentioning this game titles that we would want to see for ps5 i'll let you go first on this siphon filter oh ho, ho. i had that too i had <laughs> that too I did. Filter, right? yep yep uh, i would like to see that uh i would like to see wait 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 before i stop you so the only, not the only, I have nostalgia with that game and I enjoyed it so much, but the only other credible reason why I put this on here as a long shot is because they included it with the PlayStation Classic that they released. So I think they know there's enough people that enjoyed that game and there's a following around it, but whether or not they actually do it is something for another day, but continue. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see Fear Effect. Fear Effect... Fear Effect. I don't think I ever heard yes. of that one. No, it, it it came out in, in 1999. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, you know, you'd have to knock the dust off this thing. Like, it's back when uh, Edos was still making games. Oh, man. Yes. So, I would, of course, because it's Edos, and Edos, uh, they, what is that, Squaresoft that took over the Tomb Raider. No, it's not. Uh, I, wait, no, it wasn't. You're right. It was, it was Squaresoft. You're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like for them to take Fear Effect, and I and I would want it to be ex- the same. I would want it to be the same exact way. Uh, I'm, of course, the back then there was only the uh, the D pad to move around with, but I would like to see, of course, free range movement with the with the uh, analog. But I would like to have the same. And I think they may have dropped something from uh, Fear Effect in in 2018. I don't know if it were ever canceled, huh? Or if it. Uh, but I would like to see, I would like to see that game. All right. Uh, now, also, I would like to see uh, what's the, what's the fighting game with the with the uh, when when the people would have you know they'd be like regular people but they turn into beasts or, or whatever. Creature, oh, bloody whatever roar! Animal. Yes, bloody roar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a long shot. Yep. That'd Impossible. Be nice. Yeah, would, I don't even see it happening. But I would like to see that. That'd be nice. And the last one on my list is the is uh, Power Stone. Mm. Imagine Power Stone in the next gen. If I could guess, nobody's gonna get a shot at that except Nintendo. Nint- Nintendo? I don't think anybody's gonna have a chance of that except Nintendo. Hmm. But that's just my that's my gut. I think I yeah, can see that. They, yeah. I, I can see it happening, but I think whatever next iteration or towards the end of the Switch's lifespan, they'll probably do. They'll probably go back and do Earthbounds and stuff like that, or Mother. Yeah. And I think Power Stone might might see the light of day in that scenario, but I don't know about for her for uh, for PlayStation Five. But we'll see. I don't want to. I don't want to crush your dreams. This is the point of the list it's to be hopeful when <laughs> we shouldn't be. My it's list is be insane, man. My list is a little long, so you're gonna have to forgive me. Uh, you took one off my list, which was uh, Siphon Filter, so that's one less. But I still got a few here. I think we're gonna get another either Vigilante Eight, Twisted Metal, or Jet Moto. Uh, I had Fight Night. I had either Tenchu, a new entry into the Onimusha series, or a new Shinobi or remastered Shinobi game. Okay. I had uh, Medal of Honor. I really enjoyed Medal of Honor 1 and Medal of Honor 2 Underground uh, on PlayStation. They had a lot of trouble once Call of Duty and Battlefield got off the ground with the PS3 and Xbox 360. Uh, I did like Medal of Honor Airborne a lot, but since then, I think that was the last one that we got from them, and I think they've kind of fallen out of fame and, and notoriety that they had when they first launched on the PlayStation 1. But I think if they got back to their roots and they didn't try to be as much of a excuse me, simulation, if they went back to the more arcade silly almost golden eye-esque multiplayer couch co-op shooting game i think that'd be a lot of fun i would like a remastered mega man legends mega man legends is one of those games on my bucket list of games that i need to track down and replay because i could never beat them as a child there are games that haunt me at night that i have repressed memories about because i couldn't beat them and this is one of those games i think we're due for a non-side-scrolling Mega Man, and I think 
a remastered Mega Man Legends would be dope. Okay. Since you brought up Siphon Filter, I'm going to go with my other pick, which is a new Max Payne or a remastered Max Payne 1 and 2. Max Payne, Max yeah. Max Payne. You brought up Bloody Roar. I'm going to say Virtua Fighter deserves a shot. I'll uh, be Nintendo. <laughs> maybe. Like you were saying. Maybe. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, SOCOM. I wasn't big into SOCOM when it was popular, but I always appreciated watching the tournaments and people competing on a professional level. Mm-hmm. And I think, why not? You know, it's been a long time, so this why not is now? definitely time for that type of gameplay to come back, man. It, it needs to make it needs to make a solid comeback. Uh, there were, I won't say any names, but there were some titles that definitely uh, people wanted more from and, and were disappointed that do have that style of of, uh, of combat and it did not it didn't fare too well yeah uh next on my list i have tony hawk's pro skater it's been a minute i don't know how popular skating is i was never a skater boy man whatever but i always enjoyed tony hawk's pro skater i think the other game that was popular was called just skate i think people i don't even know i don't know I think it's worth mentioning for those that are into those kind of games. We don't get a lot of non-football, basketball, baseball, sports games. So I think Pro Skater has a chance to come back or some other version of a skating game to come back on PS5. Let's see. I'm trying to save a few because I know you're going to have a reaction for it. Let's see. I got uh, Alan Wake or Alone in the Dark. Horror games are in Uh right now. If you can capitalize on the horror game or horror horror action game genre i think now's the time to do it on that note we see resident evil nemesis remastered or remade if not i would like to see a new silent hill i know silent hill is kind of a bad taste in the mouth because of the fallout with pt but i think the series alone the name alone carried our interest just as much as actually playing the demo and seeing kojima and redis and, and knowing all that was about that game, it was still a horror game at its roots. It was still scary and entertaining and fun and a social experience. So I think we can see something like that coming in the future. Next, I got NFL Blitz or NBA Street. I'll take NFL Street too if you want to give me that. I always enjoyed the arcade sports games. I don't know why they stopped, but NFL Blitz was always fun. NFL Street was always fun. The a remastered NBA Street One, Two, and Three, I think, would be what I would l- want to see more than anything else. But if they made just a brand new one, I think they'd be cool. We saw uh, NBA Jam available digitally. We saw the NBA uh, Playgrounds got acquired by Two K Studios. It's cool. It's not the same thing as Street. It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't look the same. I think uh, we deserve to get uh, come back to that that series and that franchise. Next, I have Prince of Persia. Where is Prince of Persia been at, man? I think. Oh man! Exactly. I think PS Five would have the graphics to make the sand look crazy, the environments look crazy. Assassin's Creed like took the thunder away from Prince of Persia, and it never really came back after that. I had a lot of fun with those games. The puzzles were always engaging. The story was always dope. I think. That deserves a shot at making a triumphant return on PS5. Next is either Blood Rain or Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. These games were very dark. Long shots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the long shot list, sir. Um, what's even in the same vein as this right now? I can't even. Yeah, there's not much. I mean, I think what hurt the chances of this is that vampire game being not good but we see the success of bloodborne and all the dark souls games so i think there's room for another dark action adventure kind of game it's been forever well, since we've seen blood rain i think i would prefer to see legacy of kane over blood rain but if i if one comes and not the other then i'll take it we'll see what right. happens how you now feel? think about this. Uh-huh. I, I think that it's a good chance for it to come back, and this is why. Mm-hmm. Darksiders. Right. But that's still a little different. Darksiders, to me, is more like, um, what was that other game? Prototype? No. Yeah, Prototype, right? Yeah, I think no, that prototype was... Prototype was a bit more... Prototype was like the beginning of, like, uh, 
I'd say games like Watch Dogs and and you know a uh, uh, you know Division. Really? Yeah, just just in the sense that it's a uh, the open world game that uh, and you you know you you have to make your way to the next point. To, that's pretty much what. Well, and you actually could say that Spider Man Two pretty much made that that huge open world uh, experience. Yeah, but Spider Man games it, have been on the market a lot longer. It gave longer. you you know it gave you tasks to carry out. Right. Yeah. Those games are are you know are similar in that the ones that you speak of were a bit more linear, right? Like that, that's why I did say you know Dark Siders, but I think that I think that that would you know they would really have to do a lot more. It, it this that game would well, well, it's not really the same thing. But I saw that they were doing a remaster for Medieval, which was also very linear and dark ish, but. It's more, you know, obviously there were some comedy elements in there. I think if Medieval can make a comeback, then it kind of opens the door for some of these other games that a lot of people probably won't remember as well. But I forgot to mention one way back in games that I want to see. And what the heck happened to Splinter Cell? I've been waiting for a new Splinter Cell game for so long. I know it was more of an (laughs) Xbox original than it was to have anything to do with PlayStation, but... I really enjoyed Splinter Cell Conviction. I really enjoyed Splinter Cell Blacklist. And I've been waiting for a new one. And every time I hear Ubisoft's name, it's For Honor, it's Rainbow Six, it's nothing to do with Splinter Cell. And it, and it gets me tight because as much as I enjoy Hitman, I always preferred Splinter Cell over any other stealth game in the in that genre like that was always my go-to i wasn't the middle gear sorry guy solid guy sorry i know you are but (laughs) i was always the i just thought it was more of a cooperative experience and that's where i thought splinter cell had the edge over metal gear in my opinion because you could do co-op you could do takedowns you could do challenges between each other you can join missions together it was just fun and silly and you could be tactical you could put the difficulty crazy high you can go guns blazing you could be super stealthy and it was really satisfying and rewarding to pull those things off um but i don't know what i don't know what's going yeah. on with Ubisoft Ubisoft right lost now. Their identity. yeah they, for they sure just lost their identity, man. And, for sure and that's that's sad to see that's a, of course another whole conversation for another time but because they've lost their identity, that that title, that thing's gonna be dormant for a long time. I hope not. They yeah, there I, were I, rumors, and I think it was what's the what's the Walmart that always gets in trouble? Is it Australia or is it Canada? <laughs> One of those WalMarts they have put up a new Splinter Cell title on their online uh, site, and then it got taken down, and everybody's like, "Oh, it's confirmed." They're all about, because Apparently, whatever, whatever somebody look up whatever Walmart it is, they always have like a history of putting up games that are coming out later or to be announced later in the year, and then taking them down, and then it turns out that those games end up coming out. That was one of them. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen. I could be wrong. It could have been, you know, misprinted or who knows. It could be a conspiracy for all I know. But I, I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on a new Splinter Cell game, along with any of these games that we've been mentioning so far. But We're going to call the episode right there. Let us know what you want to see coming up for the PS5, whether you're going to buy it or not. What games would it take for you to consider buying a PS5? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks again for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter as well at NotEntertain. Thanks for your time, guys. Peace.